Well, I think after this morning, we all need to take stock in the tissue companies. <laughs> but even as bad as the weather was, as cold as it, it is and was, leaving the house this morning at seven degree weather, a truck overheating on the way here, and all the messages are we canceling service. It was worth it to come out this morning to give a send off to the Ward family and just to be able to be such a blessing to do that. And uh, just to know that such love is being poured out by this family. And now I understand why God gave me the message that he did for this morning, a godly drive-by. As we read our text this morning, as Marissa, um, uh, rather Christian Ward, read our text from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 39, and looking at the story of Philip's encounter with the eunuch. As God began to speak to me on last Sunday, while I sat here, awaiting Dr. Taylor preaching the message, and God began to speak to me as to what to, stay, to say on today, now I understand why he gave me the message that he did. I want to look at how God comes into our lives when we least expect it. I've used the term several times about how he blindsides us in worship. And truly, he has blindsided us today in a rather unusual way. It wasn't in the hoop or the shout. But could you not feel his anointing as we shared our love with three special people this morning? Could you not feel the anointing of the Lord as we poured out our love to three of his children? That's to me, is what worship is about. And as we did that this morning, and I said, would to God that every Sunday in worship was just like this, with the people of God blindsiding each other with love. The way God moves in our lives sends ripples that are far-reaching. Sometimes he blesses us unexpectedly. Now, you might be wondering where in the world this topic for sermon came from. And as I got it, I went, Ugh, what a topic. God, why are you using that? And then God showed me something. He gave me this vision of some things that happened a few years back when the terrorism of the drug culture hit the streets. And there were street gangs that began to terrorize neighborhoods with surprise shootings that began to be called by the term drive-bys. 
Now some of y'all might be too young to remember that. But what would happen is people would be sitting out on porches or in their neighborhoods and all of a sudden cars would drive down the street and somebody would lean out the window with gun and start shooting randomly and people would scream and run and you'd look around and somebody would be laying on the ground or on a porch or somebody would be dead in a living room or in a bedroom where a bullet had gone through the wall of someone's house or apartment. And then days later, the ripples of what happened would send an, a, 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 a rippling effect out into the community because there'd be funerals. And then you would see where even sometimes at funerals, those things would happen. Those were drive-bys, and it would wreak havoc in communities. And as I began to think about that, and God began to say, he says, but you know what? He said, the devil does negative drive-bys. He says, but I've been doing godly drive-bys since the beginning of time. And when I go and give a drive-by, there's always the residual effect of blessing after blessing. And I began to think, well, what do you mean? God says, well, because I come by, I come by unexpectedly and I leave blessings. He says, because when I come and give a drive by, I take nothing away but sin and sickness and pain and suffering. And in its place, I give something that takes you to a new level. I give something that blesses and does not curse. I give something that brings healing and not suffering. I give something that if it brings tears, they're tears of joy. I give something that brings life instead of death. I give something that breathes in instead of taking breath away. Now, it began to show me some drive-bys. Our text shows one of those drive-bys as the eunuch is riding in a chariot and Philip is on his journey walking and he hears the eunuch reading the scripture. Reading it out loud, and sometimes if you're reading things silently, you don't get the full gist of it. And I learned that a long time ago in school, and sometimes if you're reading something silently, you might miss something. But sometimes if you go back and you read it out loud, you might get the gist of it because you're hearing it as you're reading it. And so I could see in this picture that the spirit was giving me, the unit riding along and he's reading out loud the word of God. And God took heed to what he was hearing and he had Philip walking along and Philip heard it too and he says, well, let me just go along. And God prodded Philip to walk along near the chariot just at the right moment and pick up on what the eunuch was reading. And he began to say, here's an opportunity right. to witness. Yes. And so he placed Philip in right in the right position to give a godly drive-by. All right. All right. And so he leaned up and he asked the eunuch, he says, do you understand what you're reading? He said, well, how can I understand? I don't have anybody here that can explain it. And Philip said, well, uh, I just might know a little something, something about it. Right. Well, why don't you get on up here and tell me? Well, it's on now. And so as Philip got in the charity and began to explain what it meant, and it got to a place where the eunuch understood that he wanted 
to have what the scripture was talking about. And as Philip got to a place and he talked about the baptism being buried with Christ and resurrected with Christ. And Philip saw some water and did not want to wait till it got to a church house. Yeah. Did not want to wait till it got to a formal time or place. He did not know whether he would have another moment of time. Yeah. This was his drive-by moment. He says, here's some water right here. What's forbidding it to happen right now? He commanded the chariot to stop and he got down in the water and Philip baptized him right then. And the eunuch got up out the water having been hit by the presence of God. Now his old nature was dead and he was now risen a new creation in Christ. His old nature was passed away. God had taken the old stuff out and given him something brand new. And now Philip had done his job and he went his way and the eunuch went his way. The drive-by was done. The eunuch went off rejoicing. Philip went off continuing on his journey because there were other drive-bys to be had. All right. And in each of our lives, God does the same thing. Yes, he does. Now here's the thing that hit me. The eunuch got what he needed at that moment and continued on his journey. Here's where the ripples come in. And knowing God like I know him. I don't believe it stopped with just the eunuch getting baptized. Amen. And he's done. Yeah. I believe that what happened with the eunuch. He probably went on where he was going. Still his cup was now running over. And he probably, if the song had been written back then, he probably said, I said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. The ripples would start to roll and he would tell somebody about a person. I don't even know his name, but he got up in my chariot and explained this word to me. And I found some water along the journey and I got baptized. Now I don't think the same. I don't walk the same. I don't feel the same. I don't act the same. All because on my journey, I met a man who told me about a man who could change everything in my life. And now, I'm not the same. And that somebody that the eunuch told probably told somebody else who told somebody else who told somebody else who told somebody else and the ripples kept going. In your life, God has probably done some drive-bys. Have you been sick? Have you been to the hospital lately? Has the doctor shaken his head and walked out of the room and Jesus stepped in and said, uh, the doctor said, no, guess what? I got something I'm going to inject you with and you'll be all right. Has the devil told you one thing and God kicked him out of the room and said, I got this. Has he ever put a song in your heart that says, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. You've just had a godly drive by. Has your life ever felt like you are going down and you can't spell up and all of a sudden something hits you down in your soul and you realize I'm going to be all right. I'm going to make it through this because the Lord is with me and I've been through so much and I've come up through hard time who through trial and tribulation I've made it thus far and I know God has not brought me this far to lead me I know I'll make it through this you just had a godly drive by have 
have you ever had no meal and miss meal and all of a sudden you've got food on the table? Have you all of a sudden found your pockets empty and not know where you're going to rub two nickels together? And next thing you know, you open up the dryer and find a $20 bill in the pocket that's been washed and dried. Now you got clean money, not dirty money. Then you just had a godly drive-by. Have you ever been down and somebody encouraged you when you didn't see it coming? You just had a godly drive-by. When you were in sin and God spoke to you and said to the utmost, Jesus saved, and you said, I'm going to take you up on it. That was your first godly drive-by. Is there one this morning? Is there one? As I extend the invitation, he's driving by right now. He wants to wash somebody in the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. Is there one? He said, though your sins be of scarlet, I'll wash you. Wash you. Make you whiter than snow. I want to drive by your house. I want to drive by you like I drove by and saw Zacchaeus up in a tree and surprised him and said, you come down from that tree because I'm coming to your house today. I want to drive by you like I drove by Saul on the road to Damascus. I want to drive by you like I drove by and told Moses, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. I'm going to drive by you like I told the prophet in the valley of dry bones, can these bones live? Is there one? Let us look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that's been said and done. Now, as we prepare to go our separate ways, lead us, guide us, guard us, and protect us until we meet again. And Father, if by chance we don't make it this way another time, Lord, meet us somewhere in the middle of the air. And we can hear you say, well done. In Jesus' name we pray. And now may the grace of God, the love and fellowship in the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth now and forevermore. And all of those who love him and hope for his appearing say, amen. amen.